All right, y'all excited? Just, all right, let's do it. And whatever you're ready. Hello everyone, I am so excited to be here. Welcome to this Workforce Newsroom special report on the potential of generative AI. I'm Casero Weinrich and I am obsessed with how we work and the technologies that help us work better and more specifically, the mind shaping the future, which leads us to the brilliant panel joining us today. With me are ADP Chief Data Officer Jack Berkowitz, Global Chief Privacy Officer Jason Albert, and Vice President and Managing Counsel Elena Almeida. So for each of you, I would love to hear, what's it like having AI as your coworker? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I look at uh, the potential to kind of take out of the, the mundane tasks that nobody likes to do, like entering data into a, into a, into a form or, or building a, a report or something like that, it's all about getting rid of some of that some of that work that I, I don't like to do every day. Uh, and so I can focus on the things I like to do. None of us work in silos. We, you know, we work with colleagues, we work with teams. And with generative AI, it's like having a helper there, somebody who can help you be even better, somebody who can supplement what you bring to the table and really you know, enhance it, give you new ideas, and help you take it to the next level. Guys, I love this because I, I took that question and heard something different, which is one, kind of one of the things that makes the fact that you know, the three of us talk about this all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, AI is like the coworker who, who knows a lot, who you're pretty sure is smarter than you are, but tends to get really unfocused and has the potential to say things that you know might be a little bit off mm. and that you need to watch, um, and you know can be such a help to the team if you can just make sure that you're using it in the right way. Data is at the heart of this technology, and more specifically, data quality is going to be essential. So Jason, what do employers need to know to ensure that they're moving forward responsibly? Well, look, when you think about AI, whether it's generative AI or AI generally or machine learning, uh, the outcomes and outputs are only as good as the data that goes into it, right? You've got to have accurate data going in, representative data going in, in order to reap the benefits of the insights that it provides. But the other thing to think about is representation. It's got to be representative of the communities uh, that the AI system is going to impact. And that has a representative profile to make sure that there's accuracy and also to avoid concerns around things like bias. And, and we have a... We have a responsibility not only to say, hey, it's good, but to monitor, right? So we're constantly monitoring the data quality going in, but we also uh, have systems that monitor the recommendations or the, the outputs as well. Um, and, you know, that's a commitment we have at AAP for our, our ethics around data and AI, but it's also just good product decision, right? You want to make sure that what comes out of the system is, is indeed what you intend. Absolutely. And so ethics and compliance, definitely top of mind in this topic. And so as businesses and workers look to optimize all the tools at their disposal, Elena, trust is essential, right? And so how does compliance factor into building that trust? No, absolutely. So ADP has had a, a, a set of AI ethics principles um, for years that have guided how we've um, how we've been able to integrate artificial intelligence and machine learning into our products. And and the way I look at it is that with new technology like generative AI, with any new technology, people aren't going to use it if they don't trust it. And making sure that the product is compliant, that it's following the you know, existing rules, frameworks, best practices, as, as Jack mentioned, for making sure that the data has integrity, that um, privacy concerns are, are monitored, that um, we're keeping track of things like bias and accuracy. Part of that trust will come from educating people on you know, all the steps that companies are taking to, to make sure that, they're, um, that their data is protected and that the AI is working as it should. The one thing I might add to, to everything that Elena said is when you think about it as a client, right, you have your own compliance obligations that you still need to meet. AI doesn't have an exemption from laws, whether they're privacy laws that I care about as a global chief privacy officer or employment discrimination laws or anything else. And so it's important that you work with uh, a vendor and company that understands that, that builds the tools that enable you to meet your compliance obligations. So just uh, as uh, trust is important for the individual users, because as Elena notes, they won't use technology, they won't trust, it's important for clients to understand 
understand that there are compliance obligations that come with this technology, and you need to work with someone who's situated to understand those and has designed it in a way uh, to enable you to meet those compliance obligations. And it's funny, we're here talking about AI and tech, but it really seems to be overall a conversation about human potential. It's a great point. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's the motto of our company, right? Always designing for people. It's really about that human-machine inter, um, interaction, interplay, um, to allow things to, to flourish, all right, to, to blossom. Um, as we start to think about how systems are built, your interaction with those systems is going to change. Now, it's not always going to be in a chat. It's not, people think of it today with ChatGPT, I'm going to sit down and do a chat. But that system can also prompt right? And it can nudge. And we're working on this idea of how do you have human-centric or human-sensitive nudges, right? Instead of just flurrying with, with every, every alert and possible, when do I give you the right push or the right information at the right time? And then what's meaningful to you, right? Like what are those use cases that, or, or those examples that are meaningful? So maybe you need some vacation. You've not been taking the vacation. And so a simple nudge is just, hey, you need to take some, some leave. Or better yet, me as a manager, Hey, you know you have these, this group of people that hasn't been taking vacation. They could use a break. Mm -hmm. And so these types of human-sensitive, human-centered nudges or these, this, this interplay is where we see this technology going, you know, not in the long term, in the short term. And that's, that's going to be interesting. So it's, it's in, in the technical terms, it's called mixed initiative. The human takes the initiative. The computer takes the initiative. It doesn't really matter as long as you're partnered together. The way I think about it in terms of human potential is really it's, it's helping us be more creative, right? So um, we all have ways that we think about issues and think about problems. Um, and I think generative AI has the potential to help us, and has reality today, to help us kind of break through our own kind of maybe state thinking about different things and really open up creativity and how we're solving problems um, at work, which I think is really exciting. You know, one of the great things about AI is it can look at my resume and say, did you realize you have these skills and those skills and shouldn't you say that and make me, for example, maybe a better job candidate or suggest maybe this is a job that you are qualified for or even better, Jason, if you did this training or got this skill and experience, you can go do, do that, right? There's so much it can do to benefit uh, people, you know, lots of people talk about the risks of AI, and it's and it's always important to keep those in mind because, like any technology, it has it has risks and benefits. Yeah, and we're going to see these benefits flourish as people use the technology. It's it's interesting. Um, sometimes, particularly in the HR space, you'll hear, "Well, I don't understand this these numbers, but I'm able to use Instagram really well, right?" And in a way, you know, are we going to make Instagram-based HR systems? I don't know. But that's the sort of partnership and things that, that, that make a heck of a lot of sense for folks. Right, and it kind of democratizes the whole technology, right? That's I right. Don't need to have a, I don't need to be a coder to interact with the way these systems, that's these right. large language models. That's right. That's right. I mean, our role in the world here at the company is to help other companies flourish, but most importantly, help the employees of those companies flourish, because if they flourish, those companies flourish. And uh, so that's where we see bringing the technology. We'll have things available for um, payroll people. We'll have things available for CHROs. We'll have things available for the CEO. But, but most importantly, and we're actually already starting to do it, for, for people, right? And so that's the part of, of where it all goes over time is to just make, make it better for people. And that's what we're, we're focused on. And it, so you just said it best, ADP is helping people flourish. So part of elevating workers' um, lives overall is just ensuring that they're being paid fairly, mm -hmm. um, ensuring that there's opportunities for advancement. So how can and how will generative AI help there? Well, instead of having to go and trundle through a bunch of information, simple questions and answers. Or better yet, maybe I don't have to ask the question, it'll actually proactively alert me about an issue. Everybody is talking about this. We're hearing about it every single day. And along with this conversation, while there's a lot of excitement, there's also some concerns about bias. But Elena, how do we address those concerns? Look, so, so you know, bias is illegal, whether you're having a human make a decision about hiring, firing, or promoting somebody, if, if that's a biased decision, that's just as inappropriate as if a machine's doing that. And the interesting thing is, as humans, we all have bias, right? So we're all working, you know, every day to sort of um, 
control the unconscious bias that seeps into our decision making. The advantage we have when we're talking about an AI algorithm is that we have people, data scientists who are focused on what data should be going into the algorithm that's going to evaluate candidates. Um, how do I make sure that the algorithm isn't picking up um, sort of uh, inappropriate things about race or gender or other protected categories when it's helping make recommendations. What's really driving a lot of this conversation is a little bit of fear of the unknown. People are worried, well, AI will be biased and will not be able to detect it because it's this new and different thing. Uh, and, and really, I think when you're looking at sort of outcomes and decisions, it's probably not harder to detect it than it is with humans because, of course, it's not as if, if human decision-making is, is free, of, uh, free of bias. But I think Elena makes a really great point, which is not only can we focus on it from the data inputs and data quality to monitoring uh, of outputs and things like that, but AI can help actually drive down bias because of the fact that it takes these this information and is able to make these associations and we can check these things in a way that is is harder to do because as humans we're, we're fallible. So uh, it's important to have transparency. It's important to have transparency about the system, explainability, so people understand that so you don't have that sort of black box, will I ever be able to tell? But that's why that forms one of the core uh, principles of our AI ethics and why it's foundational to things like the NIST AI risk management framework. Work. But but the other part of that as well is is whether it's um, you know in recruiting or anything else that the the person's always in control, right? The locus of control is the person. The locus of it's not the the AI, and it's an advisor, but it's still your decision to take. It's it's up to you to decide how do you want to take that recommendation, then make make use of it. We hear a lot of. Every day, there's somebody who's coming out with a new um, AI, pro AI generated or AI product that does X or Y, and um, I think one of the aspects of our approach that I love is that um, it's not about necessarily being first, but it's about getting it right, yeah. right? And it's That's about right. doing it in the exactly. right way because we do have a lot of um, a lot of really important information about our, our clients and about our clients' employees. And um, it's important to us to make sure that we're doing it in a, in a careful, responsible way. It's also, though, for the employees, for the candidates who are using, um, who are using recruiting tools that might have AI built in. Um, you see there's a lot of legislation and regulation that's being proposed that has different conditions on how AI should be used, and a lot of those are still kind of in the, um, the early phases. But one consistent theme through those is people should know um, when AI is going to be used in a way that impacts, impacts an important part of their life. The personalization we've seen in applications will really take charge here. And that next step, and I don't know if it's next week, next month, or next year, that next step on, on that personalized interaction will be the thing that breaks everybody through. Amazing. So before we go, I'd love to go around the panel here, and have each of you give us a one sentence, if you can, final thought on the potential of generative AI. I'll start with you, Jason. One sentence, Jason. One sentence. <laughs> uh, generative AI will be more transformative in the long run than the internet has been. Don't make me go after that. That was great. <laughs> um, we need to learn about generative AI and use it as a, as a colleague, as a coworker, as a co-pilot, as part of our everyday work. And it's gonna, it's gonna help us go, go far. Generative AI will help people really reach their next step and their potential. Amazing. Thank you all so much. I, look, it's, it's not every day that you get to have conversations like this. I really appreciate your time, your thoughts, your energy. We're going to keep this conversation going. So head to ADP.com for more resources on artificial intelligence at work and follow us on LinkedIn at ADP. Thank you.